Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. In today's video, we're going to be looking at getting your students working in OneNote. I'll be showing you how to share your notebook with students for the first time so they can open it and start using it on any device. How students can find and use resources you have shared with them via the notebook's content library. How you can distribute pages from your content library so that students have a personal copy of these to work on. How you can review students' work and give them personalised feedback. Working in OneNote is great for one-to-one -one classes where everyone has their own device, or in subject areas where students have regular access to a laptop or desktop computer or an iPad. It's also great for homework assignments as OneNote works across a broad range of devices that your students have at home. Currently, with many countries still working remotely with students, it's also great for distance learning and online lessons, as it means you can see your students working on their tasks wherever they happen to be. So whether you're already using OneNote yourself for sharing course notes and want to widen this out to students, or if you're looking for a better way to work with your students online, or are simply OneNote curious and are just interested to see what it can do, then keep watching. If you find the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing by hitting the red button below. This just means YouTube is going to be a bit more likely to suggest my content to you in future. I'm regularly uploading tutorials on a range of Office 365 tools and how you can use these to help you teach. And if you hit the bell, you'll be notified about these and future uploads. In my last video, I gave a detailed introduction to teachers looking to use OneNote class notebooks to share their course notes, handouts and resources with their students. If you missed that one, you might want to go watch it first. This video is mostly aimed at teachers looking to get their students working in OneNote class notebooks as a place to do their homeworks or their classwork or their online lesson work. It assumes you're already familiar with the various sections that make up your OneNote class notebook and that you've already set up a OneNote class notebook for one or more of your teaching groups. Again, if you need some help with this part of the process, go watch this video first on how to set your class notebooks up via Teams. Let's start with students opening the class notebook for the first time. Now, a OneNote class notebook is a bespoke digital notebook set up specifically for you and the students in your teaching group. Before students can start using it, they will need to locate it online and open it for the first time. Now, students will already have all the privileges they need to access the notebook, so there's no need for you to use the share tool built into OneNote, and actually by doing this, you may end up messing up the intricate privileges set up during the notebook creation process. All you actually need to do is to help them find it. Now, you can find the web address by opening the book yourself in OneNote Online and copying the address from the address bar at the top of your browser. You can also find this address by going to the class notebook embedded in Teams, tapping on the class notebook ribbon, and then selecting Manage Notebooks. You'll see the web address listed here as the notebook link. Once you copy the link from here or from your browser, just paste it into an email and send it to your group. The students will be able to click on that link and the notebook should then open in their browser. They can then click on the open an app button and the notebook will be pushed to their OneNote app and open there. The second method is my preferred way of showing the kids how to open the notebook. Rather than sending them a link to open the notebook, I instead show them how to open Microsoft Teams, locate their class group and go to the class notebook tab. On a PC or laptop, this will show the OneNote class notebook embedded within Teams which the students can then click open in app to push it to their OneNote desktop client. Now on a mobile device, tapping on the class notebook link in Teams will just push the notebook directly to the OneNote app and open it up there. Now obviously for this to work in iOS or Android, the students will first need to have both Teams and the OneNote app already installed on their device. Both these apps are easy to find and free to install from the App Store or Play Store. I much prefer showing them this second method as once they know how to do it, they can open their notebooks on other devices and from other teachers without me having to provide them with a link. My students are mostly using iPads and I have made this video, which I normally share with them when we first start using OneNote class notebooks. Uh, feel free to share this with your own students if you find it helpful. Once your students have found your class notebook for the first time, then it's very easy for them to find it again. 
The notebook will stay open in their OneNote app, so the next time they open OneNote, the notebook will already be there waiting for them. You have to specifically tell OneNote to close an open notebook for it to go away and not to be displayed on the next occasion the app is launched. If students do close the notebook, they can simply find it again by clicking on the More Notebooks option at the bottom of the notebook list. Clicking this will take you to a list of previously open notebooks, so you can quickly reopen one if you close it down by mistake or if you start using a different version of OneNote on a different device. The next thing you'll want to show your kids is how to work with the content library. For students, this will be read only, so they can see your notes, but they cannot annotate them or make any changes. Now, it's a good idea to show your students early doors how to copy a page from the content library over to their own folder. Doing this will create their own copy of the notes page or resource, which they can annotate any way they want without making changes to your nice, clean, original copy in the content library. If you've just been using OneNote as a means of sharing your notes with the students, you may be surprised to discover that many don't realise that they can actually make their own notes in OneNote too. Now, if you want to encourage students to work this way, it's a good idea to create them a section in their area that is specifically for their own notes and jottings and expl explain to them that's what it's for. If you're clear about your expectations on how students should use the notebook, you'll find it much easier as their teacher to make sense of their filing system and find their work. The other great tool available to students straight out of the content library is Immersive Reader. If you're not familiar with Microsoft's amazing reading tool, then check this video out for more information on exactly what it does and where you can find it. I will say that it's now built into every version of OneNote, so whether your students are on a laptop, phone or iPad, they will have access to the full version of Immersive Reader, including its Read Aloud function, Picture Dictionary and Translation tools. So if your students might have difficulty reading for one reason or another, take some time to show them this feature and they will become much more confident independent learners. Now if you want all your students to have their own copy of a page so that they can complete a task on it, then the best thing to do is to distribute that page to them. This will create an individual copy for each student in your class and paste it into their own folders ready for them to work on. To do this, you need to go to the class notebook ribbon and to tap on the distribute page button. If you're not seeing this class notebook ribbon, you might need to first go into options and turn on the class notebook feature. There's just a switch you have to flick to the on position and then you'll need to close and reopen the application and it will be there. Now you'll see I've got a few options here. If I tap the top one, Distribute Page, it's going to create a copy for every student in the group. I'll come back and look at the other options in a moment, but let's just go ahead with the top option for now. You'll see I get this side panel pop up here, which gives me a choice of all the different sections I've set up for the students inside each of their folders. So I simply select which section I want it to appear in and then I press the Distribute button. OneNote will then go away and create all the copies and file away a copy in each of the students' areas. Now just a note of caution here, sometimes it takes a while for the copies to show up. What I think is going on is that the distribution process is handled by the OneNote servers in the cloud rather than in your local notebook. So it will depend on how busy those servers are on any given day, how long it's going to take for them to appear for your students. Most days this is an almost instantaneous process but on other days I've had to wait 5 to 10 minutes for them to start showing up. So whilst you can mostly get away with distributing pages to students on the fly during a lesson, if it's mission critical to the lesson you might want to be uh, distributing the page a little bit in advance so you're sure it's going to be there when you tell the kids to start the task. Now if it hasn't shown up for the student for one reason or another they can always go to the content library and copy over the page manually themselves like I explained earlier. Coming back to the other options we are offered under the Distribute Page button. Individual distribution gives the class list of my students with a tick box next to each of their names. This option is really handy if, the, if I want to distribute the page to a few students in the class rather than the whole group. If this subgroup is going to be receiving differentiated work from you on a regular basis, then the Group Distribution is a really handy function. This option allows you to set up a bunch of different subgroups of students that you can then pick from. So in this class you can see I've got an English as an additional language group and a higher achievers group. Now you can set whatever groups you want here, it's entirely up to you. Once you have them set up, 
You'll, uh, they'll be here the next time you want to differentiate a task and you can just quickly pick one of your groups and send the work out. The next option, cross notebook distribution, I personally don't use very much, but if you have lots of parallel classes, this might be really useful for you. It will give you a list of all your class notebooks and you can select multiple books to distribute the page to. You'll need to have common sections in all of the books with the same names, otherwise it's going to tell you that there are no common sections available for you to pick from. Finally, the last option, delete page, is a way of recalling a page that you perhaps sent out in error or distributed and then realized you needed to make a change to. It's fairly straightforward to, to use. Just say which folder the page is in and it will give you a list of all the different pages that have already been distributed and you can select whichever one you want to get rid of. Done. Now there's no need to distribute every single page in your content library to the student sections. Uh, that just seems like unnecessary duplication to me. I just distribute pages that I want students to actually do some work on. So if it's just a worksheet I want them to read in lesson and write the answers in their exercise book, I wouldn't bother distributing this. I just leave it in the content library and tell the students to go and find it there. But if I specifically want them to annotate it in some way or to write their answers on it, then I'm going to distribute that page to the students and get them to fill it out there. Now the next button along it is distribute section and this allows you to create a new section for each student in their own personal area. If your students are going to be doing a lot of work in OneNote, then you might want to create a new section for each unit of work that you're going to be covering. I do this in my ICT classes as the students are using OneNote for all of their work every lesson. And so over the course of the year, that's going to be a lot of tasks to keep organized. However, for my maths classes, I mostly use it for setting homework. So I might have a homework section for putting these into and a classwork section for the odd occasions where I set them some work during lessons to be completed on the iPad. Uh, I might have another section called My Notes where the students can create their own notes and copy over notes from the content library and annotate these as they, as they see fit. Now how you set up your class notebook sections will be entirely up to you and I'm sure you will develop your own structures that suit your lessons. Just a word of warning about this button though, it's very easy to create a new section for your students, just takes a second, you press this button, uh, tap in the name and distribute it. However, notice that there is no remove section option, so if you create a section and you later decide you don't want it or you want to call it something else, then the only option you have is to manu go, manually go through each student's folder and make the changes there. So my advice is to just make sections as and when you need them, the more sections you have, the more likely it will become that students file things uh, inappropriately or in the wrong places uh, and you have to go and hunt for it. Now as an alternative to distributing pages this way via the class notebook ribbon, you can now achieve the same effect via the assignment tool in Teams. If you haven't used the assignment tool before, you can watch this video that will explain exactly how it works and also covers using Teams to distribute your OneNote class notebook pages to your students. There are some advantages of, of using Teams this way, namely that you can keep all your assignments together under one roof. So if you sometimes set tasks via OneNote and sometimes using a website or an, uh, a different tool, uh, then you can keep everything together if you set it all via Teams. So check out this video if you want some more information on that. Once students have done their work, you'll want to review it and maybe provide feedback on the task. I'm going to show you some tools and strategies that I use in my own classes that I hope you find useful. Firstly, let's have a look at the Review Student Work button on the Class Notebook ribbon. This is a great tool which allows you to quickly go through students' work on a particular task. Tap the button and you'll get this side panel popping out again, which you can use to drill down on the section you want to look at and the page itself that you want to view. Now OneNote is going to group together all pages it can find in each of the students' notebooks that share the same name. Selecting a particular page and pressing Next takes me to the list of all the students who have, have a page in their uh, notebook with the same name in the particular section of the notebook. The list is automatically arranged alphabetically by surname and there is this toggle at the top uh, which you can press to rearrange them alphabetically by first name if you wish. Now, simply tap on the student's name and it will pull up their version of the page. In this task, I had students draw in diagrams of cubes which were color coded in a particular way. Now, OneNote is a great medium for setting this sort of work as it gives students lots of different ways that they can do the work. 
They need to draw 3D shapes, so I've embedded a sheet of isometric paper as a PDF that they can choose to open up and print out and can draw old school on the paper if they wish. Students can then take a photo of their work and insert it into the page. This is what this particular student chose to do. Alternatively, I've stuck the same isometric paper into the page itself and said students can use digital ink to draw and colour in the cubes, which is exactly what these two students have done. Finally, I suggested that they might want to make these cubes in Minecraft and take a screenshot of their work, which quite a, student, a few of the students chose to do. These were my personal favourites. You can see some of their lovely work inserted here. In this next task, I gave them a table to complete. And again, you can see that students have responded in different ways, some using ink, some using text. Now you can see with these particular tasks, I've put all of the instructions at the top of the page here, which are quite long and actually it's not so handy as the student's work is going to be down below the fold, so to speak, uh, down here. And I'm going to have to keep scrolling down to see it. This is not ideal. And normally I try and design my answer grid so that the student's work does appear at the top of the page as I don't like having to scroll down each time to check if they've actually attempted the task. So on this one, it's much easier to quickly flick through all of the students and see who is working and who isn't. I've been experimenting with different types of tasks. This one is a card sort type activity. I took the printouts for the cards I'd normally make up for this activity and, and run in the lesson and instead separated them out into separate image tiles that the students can move around in OneNote. I've made a grid for the students to, to arrange these cards by matching the various properties. Uh, it works out really well, a different type of activity for the kids to do and simple for me to assess. One of the lovely things about OneNote is that you can go view what the students are up to at any time. So you can observe your students in the wild, going about their work, a bit like you can back in the classroom when you roam around the room checking everyone is working, and perhaps give a prod to those who aren't or a helpful nudge to those that are stuck on something. This has been really useful during lockdown. The other great thing is that you don't need to physically collect anything in. You can simply take a look whenever you have the time and inclination to do so. No lugging heavy piles of books home to mark or staying up late to finish marking a set of books because you know you have to give them back again tomorrow. With the review students work feature working the way it does, using it successfully is going to be dependent on each student naming their page in exactly the same way. And I think that the easiest way to make sure this is the case is to distribute the page yourself in the first place. So even when the task I want the students to do is entirely freeform, I will still distribute a blank but properly, properly named page to the students. So I know all of the work is going to be labelled in the same way and I can make sure that I can use the tool to collect it back in and check on their progress. Now if instead I want to get an overview of how a particular student is working across a range of tasks, I might instead just open up their folder in OneNote and go through each of their tasks one after the other. Now, most of these tasks have been done during lockdown. So I hope you can see that by making use of OneNote, it's kept all of these online tasks together in one place. And it's going to be much easier for this student to find a particular piece of work again and get a better overview of all of the tasks done and hopefully how they interrelate than it would have been if I just sent them all out in various emails. Their student section of the OneNote is going to develop over time into a useful place for them to come back and look at their own learning journey and hopefully revise from. How about providing feedback? Well, I'm still in OneNote, so I have all the normal markup tools available to me. I can use digital ink, which is dead handy if you happen to have a laptop with a stylus like I do. Now, in my school, we have a convention that students mark their own work in red pen and teachers mark in green. So I can follow that convention here in OneNote. Uh, for this task, the student has already gone through the work using a video walkthrough of the, uh, of the task that I provided, ticking and crossing their work with a red pen. Now it's my turn and I can simply use the green pen tool to make my comments directly in the student's work. Now I have a Surface Pro that I use at work, plus I have my own two-in-one laptop at home, both of which support a stylus. Stylus is a great for teachers and if you are thinking about a new laptop, for work then do consider getting one which supports digital ink as it's really helpful from online marking and making lesson videos and things like that. I've got a few recommendations on my Amazon influencers shop that you might want to check out. If you don't have the money for a new laptop you could instead look for a graphics tablet which is going to be much cheaper than buying a whole new laptop. 
They will take a bit more getting used to than a stylus, but they generally work pretty well with OneNote. So using digital ink in this way is going to feel totally natural to teachers as it's exactly what they used to do on their paper exercises. Alternatively, you can just use text and type your feedback into the OneNote page. When you do this, OneNote will helpfully tag it with your initials and a timestamp, which you can see when you mouse over the initials here. Now, sometimes to save time, I create a block of comments that could be applied to most students' work, copy the whole block and paste it into the student's page. Using the Re Review Student Work feature, I can quickly rubber stamp my block of comments into each of the student's pages and then just delete the comments that don't apply. I find this works out pretty well, giving lots of relevant feedback to the students while also being very quick and easy for me to apply. You might also want to use the tag feature to mark your comments. There are a few pre-made ones, but actually it's worth making a bespoke one for yourself. It's really easy to do. Just click on the tag icon in the home ribbon and go to create new tag. Give it a name. I'm going to call mine teacher feedback. I like to use a tick box as you can train the students to tick it when they have read it and taken any action required. Let's use this one with the little green flag. So I might create a, my block of comments in the teacher only section, make it green, add the tags and then copy the whole block and start pasting it into the students work, deleting any non applicable comments as I go. Easy peasy. Now tags in OneNote are actually searchable. So if a student types in the name of the tag, in this case, teacher feedback, it's going to find all the pages where I've used this tag. This is definitely worth training your students how to do as it's going to mean that they can quickly find any remedial actions that they need to undertake. Now for me, this search query is going to give me a lot of results because I've added teacher feedback on lots of student pages. But when a student search for it, they're only going to find the comments in their own folder. Uh, so it's going to be really helpful for them to find them. OneNote also has a collection of colourful stickers that I know lots of you will love. There are a whole bunch to pick from and some have text you can edit so you can personalise them for your students. Now once you've finished giving feedback, you might want to use the page locking feature so that the mark work becomes read only for the student. This might be useful if you don't want them working on a task past a particular deadline or if you don't want the students deleting or changing the feedback comments you have left on their work. If you did want them to make changes, they could always copy the page and make a copy of it and work on that and leave the original one locked. Finally, if you use the Teams assignment tool to distribute the OneNote pages rather than the class notebook ribbon, then you can still come back to OneNote and use all these tools and techniques that I've been describing in this video. But additionally, you can also make use of the extra feedback opportunities provided through Teams. Here you can quickly review OneNote pages in the same way as the Review Student Work tool, plus you have a separate grade and comment field that you can make use of. So lots of options. It's also worth noting that when students hit the hand in button in Teams, this will automatically apply the page locking feature to the assignment, meaning that further changes to the task can't be made. When you have marked it and hit the return button in Teams, the task will again unlock allowing students to respond to any feedback and improve their work. So that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you have seen how useful OneNote can be as a way for your students to complete their homework or work online. If your students are lucky enough to have their own devices in your classrooms, you can go completely paperless and use OneNote instead of an exercise book or folder. I've done this for the last two years in my ICT classes and I've saved the equivalent of a small forest in printing already. My math students are also now well versed in the ways of OneNote courtesy of the lockdown. I seem to be finding it a lot easier than most of my colleagues setting up my tasks for the week and keeping my students engaged. And I put a lot of that down to OneNote and how versatile it is for students to complete their tasks while also keeping everything organised and orderly. If you found this video useful make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you'll get notified when I next upload a video. Check out these other great videos on using Office 365 tools in your classroom or in your remote learning setup. Stay safe, keep your hands clean, and I'll see you on the next video.